Hello there, this is another biology lesson and today we'll be looking at the concluding part of the topic, the cell and its environment. This is the second part of the lesson, so let's go right on. Now the objective of this lesson is to help learners define and describe the process of osmosis, state the factors that affect osmosis, describe the types of osmosis and state the examples of osmosis in nature. Describe the effect of osmosis on cells and state the differences between diffusion and osmosis. Now moving along, what is osmosis? Now as, um, as we said in the previous video, osmosis is a type of passive transport. Osmosis is defined as the flow of water or solvent molecules from a region of dilute or weaker solution to a region of concentrated or stronger solution through a selectively or differentially permeable membrane. It should be noted that osmosis is a special form of diffusion. There are three major conditions which are necessary for osmosis to take place. And these are, number one, the presence of a stronger solution, that is salt or sugar solution. Two, presence of a weaker solution, that is distilled water. Three, presence of a selectively or differentially permeable membrane now this picture that you see right here describes the process of osmosis now as you can see right here this is let's assume that this is a uh, sugar solution these are the sugar molecules right here so you can see that the concentration of sugar on this side of the beaker is low while the concentration of sugar on this side is high now if you notice if the concentration of sugar here is low that means that the concentration of the water here is high if the concentration of the sugar here is high, that means that the concentration of water molecule here is low. So it's, it's going to be quite obvious that the water molecule will move from uh, the place where you, where you have more of its molecules into the place where you have less of its molecule. So as you can see right here, the conditions here, we need a semi-permeable membrane. As you can see, this serves as a semi-permeable membrane you can see that you have this high concentration of sugar solution here and you have a low concentration of sugar solution here and because of that you have more concentration of water here than in this part so water will move in this direction where you have a low concentration to where you have high concentration of the sugar or where you have high concentration of the water to where you have low concentration of the water so you can see that the water which is the solvent will move will move from this part to this part so you can see this picture shows the movement now here you can see that the water level has dropped the water level for both are not the same but they end up with what the same sugar concentration now we are going to look at the types and examples of osmosis now osmosis is of two types we have endosmosis when a substance is placed in an in an hypotonic solution the solvent molecules move inside the cell and the cell becomes turgid or undergoes the plasmolysis this is known as endosmosis i'm going to uh, explain this one further as we move along in this lesson exosmosis is when a substance is placed in a hypertonic solution the solvent molecules move outside the cell and the cell becomes flaccid or undergoes plasmolysis this is known as exosmosis i'm going to explain this in detail as we go along with the lesson now let's look at the examples of osmosis number one absorption of water from the soil is due to what osmosis the plant roots have a higher concentration than the soil therefore the water flows into the roots number two the guard cells of the plants are also affected by osmosis when the plant cell cells are filled with water the guard cells swell up and the stomata opens three if a freshwater or saltwater fish is placed in water with different concentration the fish dies due to the entry or exit of water in the cells 
of the fish and that is why fresh water fishes must stay in fresh water and salt water fishes must stay in salt water because if you put a, a fresh water fish in a salt water it's going to die and if you put salt water fish in fresh water it's going to die as well four in an animal cell the osmosis helps in the in absorbing water from the intestine to the blood especially the large intestine five when the fingers are placed in water for a long period of time they become pruny due to the flow of water inside the cell now moving along let's look at the importance of osmosis i just explained it this is the picture of endosmosis you see water flowing into the cell causing um, the plant cell to be to be turgid you know to be very firm while an exosmosis is when water flows out of the cell due to difference in the concentration between the cells and the environment now we are going to look carefully at the effect of osmosis on cells we are going to see the pictorial description even after this slide now there are four things that can there are four things that can happen happen to cell when they are placed in different concentration in an environment that has different concentration from uh, their own number one is plasmolysis now plasmolysis is, is defined as the outward movement or flow of water from living cells when they are placed in a hypertonic solution now from the definition of terms i told you i should take note of uh, the word hypertonic solution now hypertonic solution is a solution in which the concentration of the environment is greater than the concentration of the cell in question the cell that is found in it so you see that environment will become an, an hypertonic environment because the concentration the the concentration of that environment let's assume that we are talking about salt concentration the salt concentration of that environment is greater than the salt concentration in the living cell which will cause water you know to flow out from the cell into the environment plasmolysis is often regarded as the opposite of osmosis the process of plasmolysis involves the withdrawal of water from living cells up to the extent that it will result in the pulling away of the cytoplasm from the cell membrane or cell wall don't forget that it is the plant cell that has the cell wall while the animal cell only has cell membrane as a result of this the cytoplasm will shrink and the whole cell will collapse when this happens the cells are said to be plasmolyzed this will eventually lead to the wilting or death of the plant in particular now number two another effect is hemolysis hemolysis occurs when red blood cells because uh, from the word emo emo uh, means blood so it's the process by which red blood cells become split or burst or burst open as a result of too much water passing into it now this situation will occur when red blood cells is placed in a weaker or hypotonic solution what's an hypotonic uh, what's a hypotonic solution hypotonic solution is, is the solution in which uh, the concentration of um, of the cell is greater than the concentration of the environment so obviously water will flow from the environment into into the cell causing the cell to swell in this case the red blood cell will, will take in water and become swollen and may eventually burst this is called hemolysis now in turgidity is another effect of osmosis on cells turgidity is defined as the condition in which cell cells absorb plenty of water up to a point where the cell is fully stretched the cell is fully stretched this happens in plant cell at this point the cell is said to be what turgid or firm turgidity occurs when a cell is placed in hypotonic solution just like um, the red blood cell is placed in hy hypotonic solution here it's placed in hypotonic solution usually distilled water it has low uh, it has lower concentration than the cell placed in it as a result of the fact that the cytoplasm solution is stronger than the water the cell absorbs water and becomes turgid or firm Turgidity is useful to the plants because it makes them stand erect, gives support to the stem, leaves, flowers, and guard cell. Now, this is talking about the description of plant cell within a, a hypertonic 
solution in the case of animal cell which red blood cell is one of them hemolysis of course now the last effect is flaccidity now in the case of flaccidity flaccidity is defined as the condition in which plants now the emphasis on plants here loses or lose water into their surrounding faster than they can absorb when the plant loses more water it is it is said to be what flaccid flaccidity normally occurs when there is no water in the soil or during drought such continuous loss of water to the surrounding may cause the plant to wilt or even die if it continues over a very long now you can see this effect right here the effect of osmosis in animal and plant as you can see i've already described this in the previous slide now looking at this slide you can see the pictorial representation now in isotonic solution where the concentration of the solution is uh, is the same or almost the same as the as the one of the uh, animal cell right here the red blood cell now you can see that there's no net change in the movement of water water will flow out and also into the red blood cell uh, at equal pace so the cell remains normal but if this red blood cell is placed in hypotonic solution in which its concentration is less than the concentration of the red blood cell what happens is that water will enter into the cell and it will cause it to what to lice or to burst this this condition is called hemolysis and the cell will die but in an in an hypertonic solution where the surrounding of the cell has a greater concentration than or, of sugar or salt than the red blood cell what happens is that water will flow out of the red blood cell into the environment which will cause the red blood cell to shrivel this condition is what we call crenation so the animal cell will crenate but in the case of plant cell once the plant cell is placed in an isotonic solution now water will come out you see there will be a movement of water from outside the environment into the cell and from the cell outside the environment but the movement of water into the cell will be lesser than the movement of water out of the cell which will cause the cell to be flaccid or wilt in the case of turgidity when the plant cell is placed in an hypotonic solution obviously water will move because the concentration of their environment is lesser than the concentration of the cell so water will move from the environment into the cell causing the cell to be turgid or firm now in the case of hypertonic solution where you have the plant cell inside you know an environment that has a greater uh, salt or sugar uh, concentration than the plant cell itself what will happen is that water will move out even of the of the plant cell you see and as time goes on it will cause the cytoplasm to shrink now this is the cell wall the cytoplasm will begin to shrink and once it shrinks like that we say that the cell has been what shriveled or plasmolyzed now here you will find the differences between diffusion and osmosis as you can see here in osmosis osmosis is li limited only to liquid medium while diffusion occurs in all the three me uh, mediums solid liquid and gas osmosis requires a semi-permeable membrane while diffusion does not require a semi-permeable membrane Osmosis depends on the number of solute particles dissolved in the solvent, while diffusion de depends only on the presence of other particles. This um, in osmosis, water is required for movement of particles. In diffusion, water is not required for movement. So you can pause this video and study the differences carefully between diffusion and osmosis. Now this brings us to the end of our lesson for today. Now let's take a quick look at the summary. Osmosis is defined as the flow of water or solvent molecules from a region of dilute or weaker uh, solution to a region of concentrated or stronger solution through a, se a selectively or differentially permeable membrane. There are two types of osmosis, exosmosis and endosmosis. The effects of osmosis in cells are turgidity, plasmolysis, hemolysis, crenation and flaccidity. With this, We've come to the end of the second part of the lesson, the cell and its environment. I want to pause this video and attempt to answer this question to see how much of the lessons you have learned. And please don't forget to share, subscribe and also like. I'll see you again in the next lesson. Bye-bye.